In this video series, I will show how to implement neural networks in CUDA from scratch. This means no libraries, not even the linear algebra library of NVIDIA called Kublas. If you want to follow along, make sure you have a working CUDA development environment. This is not an advanced CUDA tutorial. We will only cover the parts of CUDA we need in order to program our neural network. CUDA programming is a deep topic, from knowing about the GPU hardware architecture, the different memory types, good memory access patterns, the threading model, performance profiling, and many more things. If you're mainly interested in this type of things, you should check out some of the tutorials I linked in the description. Alright, let's start. CUDA programs that can run on the GPU are called kernels. The kernel that we are programming today will take a bunch of sets, set being the value of the neuron before the activation function, so basically the weights times the input plus the bias, and compute the activations all at once, while using many GPU threads. In order to do that, we need to do the following things. We need to initialize some buffers on the CPU and store the set values. Then we need to request some memory on the GPU for our application to use. Then we need to transfer the set values to the GPU, compute the activation values, transfer the activation values back to the CPU, and finally just print the results. When we first create a CUDA project in Visual Studio, we are already provided with a nice template, which does the error handling and prints out debug information. Right now this is a bit of distracting, so I'm going to delete that, so we can focus on the important things. But in general, I would recommend keeping the error handling, as it's quite useful. Alright, we're going to keep the error size, because we're going to use that later. And now we'll also get rid of the uh, add kernel. The first thing we're going to do is to create all the needed buffers. We need one buffer on the CPU for the set values and one for the activation values. We will call this host set values and host activations. In the CUDA world it's convention to designate data which is stored on the CPU accessible memory with host and data which is stored on the GPU memory with device. We are going to initialize that set array with values from 1 to 5. So now we've finished part 1. We created and initialized all the host memory we need. Next step is where we initialize the buffers on the graphics card and transfer our data from the CPU to the GPU. First we calculate the numbers of bytes needed because we are going to need this for the CUDA malloc call. Additionally we need two pointers which will point to the GPU memory after the CUDA malloc call. Now we can CUDA malloc. CUDA malloc expects two arguments. The first is the address of a pointer, the second is the number of bytes to allocate. CUDA malloc will change the value of the pointer so it points to free GPU memory, with as much memory as we requested. Now we are ready to transfer the data. In our example, the set values of the neurons to the GPU. This can be done with CUDA memcopy. A function signature is as follows. Destination buffer source buffer, number of bytes, and the direction. For the direction there are two options. The first is host to device and the second one is device to host. Now with that we are done with part 2. Let's move on to part 3. The goal of part 3 is to compute the activation values of the given set array. The activation function we are going to use for that is the sigmoid function. Alright, in order to compute the values on the GPU, we need to define a kernel. 
for the compiler to know that we need a GPU function instead of a regular one, we need to prepend the de function definition with underscore underscore global. One essential thing we are provided with is the thread ID, which gives us the power to coordinate the work between threads. We will use the thread ID to decide which activation value each thread will compute. We can get the thread ID with thread idx.x. If you're wondering why thread idx.x, this is because you can have three dimensional thread cubes, where you have thread idx.x, thread idx.y, and thread idx.z. But we don't need this for now. Each thread gets one set value and will write the activation value into the activation matrix buffer. Thread 0 will output activation 0 given set 0. Thread 1 will output activation 1 given set 1. Thread 2 will output activation 2 given set 2. And so on. The formula on the right is just a sigmoid formula. Also we need to import cmath for the exponential function. Alright, that's it for the kernel, simple as that. We have a kernel which can compute all the activation values at once. The only thing left to do now is call the kernel. This can be done via the triple chevron launch syntax. The two values in the angled brackets are the number of blocks and the number of threads per block. Alright, so now we have completed part 3. But there is still one problem. We can't access the computed values like this. In order to be able to print them on the screen, we first need to transfer the values from the GPU to the CPU. Fortunately, this is rather easy. All we need to do is another CUDA mem copy call. But this time in the opposite direction. So we need to use CUDA mem copy device to host. Now all there is left to do is print the results. And as we can see, everything was computed. So to summarize what we did, take a look at this picture. We assumed we have a bunch of computed set values and coded a kernel which can compute the activations for these set values all at once. We started with this part of the neural network because it's the easiest to implement. Next time we're going to have a look at the dot product between inputs and the weights and how to add the biases. So next time we're actually going to compute the set values instead of assuming we already have them. Alright, this concludes the first tutorial on programming neural networks in CUDA from scratch. Thanks for watching.